About two hours after uh, President Trump's shooting in Butler, I got a call from a guy called Callie Means, mm -hmm. who is uh, I'm a, really a, a genius who's been on the, the forefront of reforming our food system and, you know, dealing with the chronic disease epidemic. He and his sister, Casey Means, who did this wonderful interview with, uh, with Tucker that, you know, introduced a lot of people to them. He called me and he said to me, you know, are you interested in talking to uh, the Trump team about, you know, some kind of a partnership about perhaps unifying your parties? And he, um, and I said, no, immediately. And then I actually called my family um, members and talked to, you know, a number of uh, my, you know, my immediate family members. And, and um, they said, uh, you should talk to him. My, my wife said, you know, you should talk to him. But she was not thinking about unifying the party. She was just thinking that, that he had just been shot and that, um, you know, my, because I came from a background where my, you know, my uncle, my father were killed by assassins, that it would be a compassionate thing to talk to him. But my kids were, you know, you should talk to him about, you know, um, about hearing him out on what he has in mind. And um, so I ended up, I then sent Callie Means a text saying, you know, I'm interested. And then a few minutes later, I got a, a text from, a three-way text from Tucker Carlson with an unknown number that was President Trump's cell phone. And he said, you know, uh, will you guys talk? And then I said, yes. And I, a few minutes later, I got a call from President Trump. And we talked probably for 30 or 35 minutes. And we talked about um, a whole lot of issues, different issues, and, you know, about his shooting and, and uh, about the issues that I was interested in. And he expressed a kind of a, at that point, was which was a, a, a conformance with me on some of that, alignment with me on some of those issues. And we agreed to meet the next day and we ended up meeting in Milwaukee and we had, I think, probably about two and a half hours together. And um, at that point, we talked about the food system. We talked about the chronic disease epidemic. We talked about the, uh, the about the neocons and the addiction to war. And I was impressed by his just, uh, I would say, visceral revulsion about the neocons and about their view of an imperium abroad and a national security state at home, which go hand in hand because imperialism abroad is inconsistent with democracy at home. And um, with also his abhorrence for censorship, which he was, again, it was visceral with him. And I think part of that is because he's seen it in action. You know, he's been the target of, of censorship the same as I have. And um, so then we agreed that maybe there was a uh, there was grounds to meet on. They wanted me to do something at the at the convention, the Republican convention, and I was not ready to do anything. And then after that, I actually contacted the Harris campaign to see if she would have a conversation with me. Mm -hmm. And she just said outright no. And then, uh, what? Why do you think that was? I mean. You think a conversation? I don't. Would I don't be know. I don't. To me, it's unimaginable that you know you wouldn't have a conversation, that kind of conversation, particularly because you know my um, uh, because the the race can be so close. It's going to be within two or three points, and I had a, a following enough that was large enough yeah. to, to swing it one way or the other. And at least theoretically, um, so you know, I wouldn't. Is it I, guilt by association? Is it something like that? I mean, I've had a lot of I experience think, with I Democrats think I who wouldn't talk so to me. radioactive yeah. in the Democratic Party, and also they, you know, they believe their own publicity. So they've got, they're all reading the New York Times and watching CNN, and if you're living in that. Uh, information ecosystem. First of all, you'll never see me talk, explain my own issues. What you'll hear is that, 
you know, I'm anti-vax and that I'm uh, anti-science and that I'm uh, I'm a crazy person and that uh, I'm a lunatic and, you know, all the other things that are just, uh, are kind of the standard defamations and and perjuries about me on the on the democratic control media or aligned media. So, and they're probably believing parts of that and, you know, um, so... Uh, who knows? That so might also I be part I can't of that. look into her, her, her mind and, and explain what, what they did, uh, you know, why they did. I, I could speculate a lot, but, you know, what's the point? And then I continued having conversations with the Trump campaign and uh, with President Trump himself in a number of personal conversations. And I ended up going to Mar-a-Lago with Amaryllis, my daughter-in-law, who runs my campaign. And we sat down with um, with Don Jr. and with uh, with uh, President Trump and, and Susie Wiles' campaign manager for several hours and talked through these issues. And we agreed to do a unity campaign where we would, like they have in Europe, where there are, you know, where there are, um, there's coalitions where you don't you don't give up your own independence or your capacity to criticize your allies on things with which you don't agree with them. And and he was very agreeable to that. And on the things that on the issues that we don't agree on, that I would continue to criticize him and he could criticize me without penalty and uh to our to our alliance and that um uh, that uh the issues that we did agree on, he agreed to make them priorities, and to um, and to involve me in some way in uh, in helping to choose the new government and helping to give emphasis to the policies that I was concerned about. And the three policies were children's health and the chronic disease epidemic and which involves the food system and the and you know and getting the corruption out of the the public health agencies and out of USDA um, second to ending the censorship and and uh, and surveillance and number three ending the uh, the warfare state ending the Ukraine war uh, immediately, and um, all of those are issues that he. Uh, you know, those are big issues. Had come to on his own, and that I think he appreciated my insights on some of those issues and my uh, passion for some of those issues and my knowledge about some of those issues and expertise. And he welcomed me, you know, my involvement. I mean, one of the things you asked me about what I sort of had come to discover about President Trump, and he yeah. said to me a number of things that were very illuminating. One is that he and Donald Jr. Um, and J.D. Vance were absolutely um, – had extraordinary antipathy toward what the neocons have done to our country. 